The Matrix indeed has you, but you can escape. Hello, welcome to this week's Vice Spirits News. I'm Sibylla, and today I'll tell you the Matrix has you for real this time. If anyone doesn't remember the Matrix movie trilogy, you mean not everyone has watched it dozens of times and owns the DVDs? It is set in a dystopian future where humans are held prisoner in their own minds. They're immobilized and, prison and imprisoned their entire lives while their brains are plugged into a system that stimulates it in such a way that people hallucinate, basically hallucinate our world, our daily lives. And they think, they live, go to work, have relationships, and actually it's all a brain hallucination, so to speak. When the first movie came out and this concept was became known, it was it really deeply shook everybody who first watched the first Matrix movie. And the funny thing is that nowadays, 20, 25 years later, our reality in parts resembles this dystopian future, except this time we participate voluntarily. So your mission today is to learn why the Matrix has you and how you can escape it. Test number one is the Matrix has you. Okay, so what am I on about? The world today is dominated by media. I don't know anyone, and that includes my hippie off-the-grid friends, who doesn't use screens in some fashion in their lives, in their daily lives, actually. So we've all heard about smartphone addiction or social media addiction, but even if you don't use Facebook and co, it doesn't mean you're off the hook. You might still have a TV. That's another screen, right? What happens when we use media. Now, at the most basic level, we stare at a screen, at some glowing box, <laughs> and vividly hallucinate by following along. This, this in, it stimulates emotions in us, it stimulates reactions, it's, it gives us information, it's, it stimulates our brains and our emotions in a very vivid way. Now, does this remind you of a description I just gave of, a, of the movie trilogy? Test number two is called The Effects. Now, obviously, this phenomenon is not new. It started decades ago with TV addiction. However, decades ago, TV didn't go on 24-7. TV had a, the TV program had a beginning and an end. So people weren't always in front of their screens. And also the TVs were usually in their living rooms and they couldn't take them along like we do with our smartphones these days, right? And the thing with the internet is that it's interactive. So it stimulates our brains even further. And like modern TV programs have evolved into something that is designed to make us addicted to it. This is true times 10 for the internet and for social media who are designed to capture our brains, to capture our attention and to keep our attention. This is an entire, there's entire departments in these companies and entire, there's droves of scientists researching on, about, on exactly this effect with the sole purpose of keeping our attention because attention these days is, that's the product, that is what is being marketed, that is what makes money in advertising, for example. I should know, I'm a gamer. I used to, years ago, I used to dis discover a new game and disappear for a month or two because it was so addictive, because gaming is also, games are also designed to be ad addictive, a lot of them are. Now, during the pandemic, during all the lockdowns, the internet was a blessing because we were so deprived of, we couldn't go out, we couldn't do things. So that was great. But this phase in our lives, these two years, have exacerbated the problem. The problem was there before, obviously, but it's become even worse. Now, these days, researchers and studies, one after the other, find that people on average interact with other humans a lot less, and we're talking significantly less than they did 30 years ago. And that is not healthy because it deprives us of the actual human contact, which has been replaced by the TV, by the social media, by the internet, the chat groups, groups the games. Task number three is the way out. So some people recommend a hard reset, just throwing out all your screens. If that thought, by the way, if that thought of throwing out all your screens makes you cringe and makes you come up with all sorts of excuses why you can't do this because of work, because of this and that and the other, take a step back and observe your reaction because that is 
that is exactly the matrix that I've been talking about. I'm not even recommending throwing everything out and going back to the Stone Age. You don't have to do that. Here are a couple of steps that you can take in order to get on top of this and to reverse this effect and to even out and balance your life in this respect. First of all, just to prove to yourself that you can take a weekend or at least one full day, a full 24 hours away from all screens. Observe during that time how you feel, whether you get anxious, what your impulses are. Don't judge. Don't think, oh, I'm such a junkie. You're not failing. You're not a bad person. This stuff, again, this is a refined science by now. You're not stupid or shallow for being addicted to media. The media are designed to do that. In fact, they have found out that intelligent people are more prone to this addiction. So the most intelligent people are the most addicted. So if you find this difficult, congratulations, you're smart. Don't beat yourself up. In the future, you might want to consider doing this, making this a regular thing, like taking one day per week, maybe a weekend day, or at least one evening per week, completely screen free. And the third point is make an effort to reach out to your friends and to actually interact with humans regularly once again. This is an effort because we're not used to it as much anymore, but make an effort to, you can set yourself a goal how many times a week or a month or whatever, you will actually meet up with other humans. And a tip from me is don't make all of these group gatherings because if you meet somebody, a friend one-on-one, -on -one, it tends to go a little deeper. It, it makes for more meaningful connection and conversation. So this gets me to task number three, which is as usual, let me know. Leave a comment and tell me what you think of this. Are you, do you think you're in the matrix? Do you think I'm, I'm exaggerating and this was just a clickbaity title? I, you can disagree it's, it's, as long as you're doing it respectfully and I'll reply to every comment, I promise. If you would like some more, consider con joining the community of Wild Spirits. Go to wildspiritscoaching.com and fill in that little form. You get one email per week, 100% spam free with additional articles and information and recommendations of books and other resources. And sometimes you get exclusive offers that are only for my subscribers that nobody else ever gets to see. So go to wildspiritscoaching.com and sign up. Or you can Google Wild Spirits Coaching. That'll get you to the website as well. Thank you for watching. <laughs>